IK Booster. It is among the most powerful and versatile of animation and rigging tools available to lightweight users. With it, you can exponentially decrease the amount of time it takes to produce high quality animation while at the same time allowing your rig to adapt to any situation at any time. This video is meant as a starter guide, which I feel contains the bare minimum information required to effectively use and learn IK Booster. There are things about this tool that are not obvious where, if you don't know about it, it will frustrate the living hell out of you. Ideally, watching this video will allow you to watch other, more advanced IK Booster tutorials and explore its functions on your own without running into the problems that users are typically faced with. For the purposes of this tutorial, it will assume that you have at least basic knowledge of rigging a character in Lightwave. With that said, let's go. When you have a character set up with bones and ready to go, IK Booster is easy to activate. Simply right click on any object's pivot point and select Apply IK Booster. You can also activate IK Booster by selecting the object, pressing P for properties, and selecting IK Booster from this list in the Geometry tab. You can activate IK Booster mode at any time by hitting Control B and deactivate it by hitting T or using Lightwave's built in movement functions. Right away, you'll notice that you can click drag the left mouse button on any bone or any part of a bone to move the character. Pretty cool, but the rig isn't quite practical like this because it floats away and messes up if you drag too far, and it's hard to move things accurately this way. Let's take a look at some of the options available that can help us fix this issue. I'll get the character back into place by using undo and select the right shoulder. See this circle? This is IK Booster's way of telling you that it is active and that it's in rotate mode. Let's first examine the available right click menus for a selected item. When you right click on this circle right here, you will get a menu. But note that you can also right click on these three figures as well for additional options, which represent heading, pitch, and bank. So for example, if I want to lock the heading and pitch, I can right click on heading, select lock, and then do the same for pitch. Locked items are denoted by parentheses. IK Booster will also tell you whether a plugin is affecting that item if there is one present. You can also left click and drag on the three figures if you want to manipulate only one channel at a time. Also, say that you want to change a control to move mode. Setting an item to move mode is especially useful for joint based rigs and setting up miscellaneous control schemes. Right click on the circle, scroll down to mode, and select Move. You will see that the selection icon changes to reflect the mode of the item, and now when we click drag, it moves instead of rotates, as expected. Okay, let's get back to the problem at hand though. Now that we've explored some of the right click stuff, let's make it so that only the left arm will move when we manipulate that area. We can select and right click on the shoulder and pick the option called IK Stop. This tells IK Booster that anything past this point in the object's hierarchy will not be affected by your movements of the left arm. IK stopped items are denoted by a diamond. Note that this is a one-way setup, so if I mess with anything beyond this point, it will still move the whole character. IK stop, just like every single other rigging option in IK Booster, can be removed and changed at any time, even if you're midway through animation. Unlike other rigging methods, uh, rigging with IK Booster has no consequences when you change up things. There's another important command in IK Booster called fix. This anchors the item in place despite the movements you do on any other part of the rig. This command can also be used in some pretty cool ways such as fixing the hand to easily position the elbow, or fixing two ends of a bone chain to fine-tune its shape, a cool trick for tails, ropes, etc., 
or simply allowing your character to easily interact with solid surfaces. Now, this tutorial is not going to cover the IK simulation aspects of IK Booster, but know that if you want to simulate IK effectively, more than just fixing an item is required for good results. It's easy to do, but I'd rather that and similar technical aspects be in their own separated tutorial videos. Let's move on to one of the most important aspects of IK Booster, the keyframe mode setting. Please direct your attention to this tiny little drop down menu in the left corner. This inconspicuous option is extremely important as it controls nearly every single aspect of IK Booster, including bone dynamics, pose load and save, which items get which keyframes, baking, even deleting keyframes via the Control D hotkey. If you don't know what this option does, many of IK Booster's functions will either frustrate you or simply not work at all. So what exactly does this do? Well, let's find out. I'm going to leave this on parent mode and move the frame 10 and then move my character's arm. See these highlighted circles? These tell you which bones are getting keyframes when you do almost any action with IK Booster. Note, whether these highlighted circles actually show up on your rig depends on the scale of your object. If you enable IK Booster on your rig and either don't see them or they're way too large, you can go into the IKB menu here, select Options, and change the regrettably misspelled controller size to a larger or smaller value to suit your preference. I personally like to keep them out of sight, but for this video I'll keep them visible. Now, I'm going to go over the keyframe modes one at a time. Remember this applies to nearly every action done in IK Booster. For the sake of simplicity, I will use a bone chain to illustrate these modes. All mode does as it implies. All items on the rig's entire hierarchy, no matter which bone you control, will get a keyframe whether the item is actually moving or not. This mode is most handy for doing pose-to-pose -pose animation. Parent, which is the default mode in IK Booster, gives keyframes to everything above the selected item in the hierarchy. Whether this setting is optimal for you depends heavily on your rig's setup and what you're controlling. Child keyframes everything below what is currently selected. This is very handy for when you want to limit actions to only a certain part of the body. Parent plus child is pretty much like having both of these modes active at the same time. Think of it as a way to manipulate entire sections of your character without worrying about what you have selected. And finally, current item. It does as it implies, and it's the mode that I use most often, but which mode that you prefer is really up to you, and how your rig is set up specifically. There's a few extra notes about the keyframe mode that I should mention. One, all keyframe modes except for current ignore IK stop when it comes to creating keyframes. For example, if you have parent mode enabled and move the arm around, the body will also get keyframes despite the fact that they did not move at all. This is even if those bones are locked. 2. If what you're manipulating by hand requires movement that lies outside of the keyframe mode to function properly, those items will also get keyframes. For example, even though I'm moving this bone chain while in child mode, everything up to the IK stop will still get keyframes. 3. The keyframe mode can influence how smooth or how choppy your rig operates when moved. So if you're setting up a pose and you want snappier feedback, do the first movement in all mode, then switch the current mode to finish moving things around. This is especially relevant for rigs that have a lot of bones on them. And four, when in move mode, moving the item in IK Booster will only give the current item a keyframe, regardless of the keyframe mode you have set. Most importantly, remember that what you have selected combined with the keyframe mode dictates how most of IK Booster's functions operate. We're going to move on to the final main topic of this video, and that's the IK Booster track, which is this inconspicuous, semi-transparent gray bar. This allows you to manipulate various aspects of your animation quickly and efficiently. It's not much to look at, but rest assured that it is a very powerful tool that would be foolish to overlook. Check out this sample animation. 
Nothing award-winning, of course, but it will help illustrate what I'm talking about. I simply used all mode and made some poses between frame 0 and frame 30. Let's say that we're not happy with the timing of our animation and we want to shift keyframes around. By left-clicking on the gray bar, it creates a marker. This marker denotes what's going to happen when you left-click and drag across the transparent gray bar. So, if you left-click and drag the left of this marker, it doesn't matter where, everything to the left will get shifted. And the same goes for when you manipulate the right side in the same way. These little arrows that form when doing this are simply telling you the original position and the new position. Now, the keyframe mode combined with what you have currently selected is extremely important to understanding and using this tool. So if I select the shoulder and set the keyframe mode to child, then shift everything to the right, notice that only the arm's animation slowed down, not the rest of the body. To put it simply, you can selectively apply these shifts to keyframes across multiple items effortlessly. By clicking on the marker again, it disappears and allows you to click elsewhere to reposition that marker. If you click drag the left mouse button on the transparent gray bar and no marker is present when you do this, the entire timeline relevant to your keyframe mode and selection will be shifted. Also, Another way to reposition the marker is to left-click drag the marker itself. And that's pretty much it for the IK Booster track. Uh, the tool does take a little bit of getting used to, but it will greatly enhance your animation workflow. Okay, I think what I covered is what will get the average person started with IK Booster. But before I end this video, I want to point out two things that have been the center of frustration for many people using this tool. When you're in IK Booster mode, these buttons down here do not, I repeat, do not represent actually locking an item. These buttons, when in IK Booster mode, stand for Global Channel Disabling Exclusive to IK Booster mode. The XYZ seen here stands for XYZ and HPB. So when you click the X, for example, it turns gray to indicate that both the X and H channels are disabled for IK Booster movements. Note that you can click on this again to re-enable those channels even though the button looks unclickable. This can be useful if you want to quickly disable channels for all items that you control without actually having to select anything. Note that whatever you have set here is saved with the scene. This is why some people think that IK Booster has broken on them when in actuality they hit those buttons in the corner without realizing that they were in IK Booster mode when trying to disable a movement channel. If things aren't moving right, check down here and make sure that nothing is grayed out. And secondly, do not double up on applying IK Booster. Some people, like myself, like to use nulls to help control groups of bones. The only time that you ever need to apply IK Booster is on the object itself, and any items childed to that object will automatically get IK Booster applied to them. If you try to put IK Booster on a null that is part of an object that already has IK Booster applied, you're going to have problems, especially when it comes to using the undo command. I just mentioned this because I made the same mistake and it frustrated me when I ran into the problems. Don't double up on applying IK Booster to items. Only the object itself needs it, not any nulls that might be attached to that object. Okay, that's a wrap. Uh, I really hope this video helped clear up a few things and will ease the learning process as you explore more advanced tools and tutorials related to IK Booster. What I've covered is only a fraction of what IK Booster can do. Uh, there's pose saving, mirroring, saving and loading animation, booster link, ghost mode, IK targeting. That's the thing about IK Booster. It may not be the easiest program to learn, but it sure is easy to use. Once you have it down and get a workflow going, you will find that you can pretty much leave other animators in the dust with how fast and efficient that you will be able to work using this awesome animation powerhouse of a tool.